Thanks. Um, we should start. I'm Fiona Schaefer, one of the innovation managers at Innescott Health, and I cover the east of Scotland, um, ambulance service in NES, and I'm joined by my colleague Francis Ramsey, um, who is my equivalent in the west of Scotland. And the reason for having the session today is that we've been engaging with students for a number of years now, um, more intensively with student projects. Um, I want to share the benefits of, of that and bring in some new ideas for, for, for the coming years. Um, we've been talking of encouraging innovation and supporting, supporting innovation or engendering that um, ideas, talking about understanding intellectual property, medical device regulations and things like that with um, university students for some time. Um, most recently, I've been working with Queen Margaret and Napier in terms of supporting their innovation models as well. Um, and, you know, not working with nurses, videos, occupational therapists and, and radiographers, for example, and, you know, very much culturing, encouraging that culture of innovation in healthcare with healthcare professionals, even before they start their real fully fledged professional career and exposing product design engineers of the future to the healthcare environment is kind of one of the reasons why um, we found it really useful. And so today we're going to um, delighted I'm joined by Dr. Theo Lim um, and Professor Maywen Kersedi Harris from Heriot Watt um, talking about their programme with engineering student projects um, talking about the benefits of both, you know, to the companies and or organisations and students. And then we're going to hear from Lorraine Thompson from Interface, um, who are very well placed and do a lot of facilitating those links in to find the right match for student projects. And in fact, we're, you know, instrumental in, in, in building that initial link for us with Harriet Watt. Um, and it goes much beyond that. It's not just about student projects, though. Um, that can be a good entry on to, to other other projects and other collaborations and building relationships. Then we'll have time for some questions. So please do add um, your questions in either the chat or the question and answers. And um, we'll come to those probably at the end. Hopefully we'll have a good few minutes for to do that. So um, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with us, Innescott Health, we used to be called Scottish Health Innovations, and we've been around for about 20 odd years. And we, our role is really about protecting, commercialising NHS intellectual property. So we have, we have chief scientist funding, uh, scientist office funding, and year, year to year we receive around 100 odd ideas and less than just less than 10% get to, to progress. Our focus is very much on the commercial strength and health economic benefits of those products and services that we can help develop. And the goal is about generating a financial return to the NHS and innovator over and above the benefit of the actual product um, that can generate patient benefit as well. So for today, if you, I mean, hopefully some of you will have ideas, but you may have questions and things you'd like to discuss separately from, from this open forum. So um, you can book a consultation on our website um, in relation to this or in any other ideas and innovations or queries you have around that. So um, do take advantage of that. Um, very much focus for NHS and, and healthcare professionals. So we, our innovation pathway really encapsulates um, how we, you know, we support innovators through the process and um, building on years of um, expertise and experience. So we're supporting that. So if ideas do come in at different areas. Sometimes it's a prototype, some it's further afield. Sometimes it's very much it's an early concept. And so those early ideas um, and concepts often need to be developed further or explored and investigated, which leads on to why we've engaged with university students over the last few years. Um, it's not something that we haven't done before. Um, we've worked with other universities um, um, in the past, um, but I'm going to sort of talk a little bit about what we've done most recently, um, and though I'm going to leave um, they all might want to talk more in detail about the latest um, projects. I'll just give you a little bit of a context with how we've engaged and what our role is in, in this whole process. It's very much 
part of how we can take an idea forward. Um, so, you know, we, you know, working with healthcare professionals, nurses, midwives, doctors, physios, you know, whatever aspect or in area, and also people working in back office, admittedly, um, we work, that's where a lot of the knowledge and experience know-how about current care and experiences that is coming from. And so actually engaging with those groups, working up what a project brief would be and supporting those, their engagement with these student projects has been one way to actually take them forward. Um, you know, and there's also a limit of about time that they have on offer. And um, what really nudged us into working with students a couple of years ago was a project idea, which actually was a multiple ideas in relation to re redesigning urinary catheters. Um, Dr. Graham Tideman is an ops gynae um, um, consultant, um, semi-retired from NHS Fife, um, he's a serial innovator, has come up with lots of different ideas, works with, you know, collaborates in, with others. So in terms of they've been simulators for training for um, difficult births and deliveries. And um, I think one of his, some of his efforts is now actually bringing Tideman tube, which is uh, disimpacts um, fetal head problems. Um, so he's, he was really keen to work with with product developers or to reckon that students would be a good way to engineers to actually come from a different perspective and actually look at how could you solve some of the some of the the problems that they, he, he'd been finding and um, which led us to working with Harriet Watt um, and talking to Theo um, through interface I think I'd already originally approached um, former colleagues and uh, saying oh well, I think this could be good for a student project you know oh what are what are the different universities doing at the moment because things change um, and so it, it's been proved that and other ties that we've had or relationships we've had with them um, or we have with um, Harriet Watt it, it made a lot of sense to have that um, and I'm not going to go into much of that because I think that's their best introducing and talking about those. Um, plus, we don't really want to talk too much about the details. So sadly, don't have any great pictures um, to share. That comes in the next slide. Um, this year, we also worked with um, Glasgow School of Art because coincidentally, um, Graham Tideman's daughter is also a um, product design engineer and lectures part time at Glasgow School of Art. So very much taking that idea forward and she wanted to see, you know, having a healthcare, having having exposure to healthcare is a, just a different environment that lots aren't familiar with, but it also brings up lots of questions and how you engage with people and how you understand the problem in the first place. So they actually used um, um, a training tool idea that came from Grampian as well as uh, this, the catheter idea with from um, Graham Tideman to actually took a number of teams took the project through in a six week period which is a different approach um but it's also been adding to actually benefits on both both sides that we've kind of refined ideas and formulated and um one of the limitations with working with healthcare professionals and healthcare innovators don't have much time and it's quite hard to get access into or to go and speak to patients and get access into into hospital settings for obvious reasons so um may when established uh, links with it with Edinburgh Napier um the clinical skills and simulation center um run by prof um Cathal Brian and that's actually an really really enhanced how those projects have actually gone forward um and I mean the good news is is that we are actually taking those some of the designs forward some were more formulated than others um some where I think we've we've got to a stage where we can actually engage with manufacturers who might do that refinement and development um, and work with the medical Desi design manufacturing centre, also at Harry, hosted at Harriet Watt to, to look at how we can bring those ideas now to market. So it's been really productive for us. So I should I just wanted to give you a bit of context and, and why we think it's really useful for us to work up ideas in that early stage. Um, and it might be that you've got, hopefully at the end of this, you've got some ideas and they might be nearer to being problem statements or a problem area where you've got a vague idea of what it might come, might might lead to, or you need, or you've got a really specific problem. So we're happy to actually field all, all types of ideas because it may not be that it suits one program, but it suits something else or we're able to do other types of supports. So 
Um, let me hand over and stop sharing to Dr. Theo Lim, who's the Programme Director of the MSc in Advanced Me Mechanical Engineering with Industrial Applications, um, has got a lot of experience actually in healthcare as among, amongst other industry um, areas. And um, we've got um, um, Professor Maywen Kosodi Kars, who's also, um, in addition to being Professor of Microfluidics, has done a lot with clinical microfluidics and sustainability, but also is the academic lead for the Global Research Institute in Health and Care Technologies at, at, um, at Harriet Watt. Okay, so, so shall I go? Okay, so um, <clears throat> hello everybody, Theo here. Um, I recognize Lorraine um, <clears throat> and I met Francis earlier on. Um, so a, it's going to be a double act between myself and uh, uh, Pro uh, Professor Myron um, here. So I'll, I'll start off with um, giving you the very um, brief overview of, of the course that we run here. Uh, it's it's termed as engineering and manufacturing, and basically it's run over um, one whole year. That makes it's made up of two semesters. And uh, what we want to do in this course here is really to um, embed students very early on. Now you could think of this like a playground very early on now in the world of industry and industrial projects. And so there's actually very little lectures going on here. Uh, most of the lectures actually run in terms like workshops and seminars rather than actual lectures. Um, so we come from an experiential learning um, side of things, and our assessments are team-based learning type assessments. Uh, there's also the individual part of it, uh, which uh, you know we we will do as well. Uh, range of projects that we do here can be from conceptual all the way to um, uh, even com we had companies before that are kind of like TRL six, TRL seven, and want to take it further on. Um, so. Uh, we are very open to all sorts of um, a, a whole range of, of spectrum of, of uh, projects here. It doesn't have to be medical. It can be medical related. Um, so we've done anything from uh, consumer goods all the way to heavy industry. So the timeline for us is September because that's when our semester starts. And um, uh, there's going to be a, uh, you know, the the December break, and then after that we start again in January, and then we'll finish off in, in April. And along this, this journey here, the students will go through uh, presentations, which is what we call surgeries, uh, and where clients have a chance to really question the um, the team, the student team, about what they've done, you know, how they came up with the ideas, concepts, etc., and how they evaluated it. Um, and then the students are also required to write a technical report at the end of uh, the, the, the project. But in the middle, you have an interim report. So just to give you an idea about the kind of history, um, I, I, I developed this um, course, or you could say in, in way back in 2007, and uh, now it's 2024. And um, over that time, we have had you know different industries, different companies. The ones in red there are the interesting one because these are companies that, or these are sectors that have obtained either patents or new business uh, products. Um, and we've also entered into various competitions before. Um, John Logan Bear, Mega Brainstorm, Converge Spinouts, even for students that were on this course, uh, they actually spun out. One of them was a robotics company, and they actually make robots for Edinburgh uh, Airport. Okay. So it just gives you a, a kind of an idea. In terms of clinical, uh, we really started off in 2011. Uh, that's when we started to get our medical type based um, projects. So it just give you a flavor. Of, of types of projects, you know, we have, uh, I, I, you, you guys might remember Touch Bionics, uh, they've now changed their name. Um, uh, we also done some ultrasound before, um, so not, not too surprising <laughs> uh, if, if, uh, on, 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 you know, Cathal's side. Um, uh, we've done um, things to do with uh, wire osteotomy, um, uh, all the way to tissue plaques, and, and, and more recently, um, we've done things with variables um, as well as InnoScot and uh, neighbor projects, uh, you know, beginning in 2022 and then, you know, moving on 23, hopefully in the next uh, year as well. Uh, we have quite good feedback from some of our clients. Um, a lot of them are, are quite um, happy with, with the projects, um, certainly from Touch Bionics. Some of the ideas here have translated into actual products uh, that have been sold. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand you over to Maiwen, who's going to talk about the uh, medical projects that uh, uh, started, um, I guess, seriously last year. 
uh, and and some of the outcomes of that. Uh, Mayun, do you want to take over? Thank you very much, Theo. And um, do I have control of the slides, or can you turn the slides? Yeah, um, yeah, I can. I can set the slides. I'm, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure. Wait, hang on. Can I give you control here? That's the thing. Uh, no. I tell you what. Uh, whoops. Uh, uh, you you tell me when to change the slide. Thank you, Theo. Um, so good morning uh, to you all. Um, so quick uh, intro uh, uh, to, to myself and, and to these uh, global research institutes um, that uh, Fiona mentioned. So I'm prof of engineering at Harriet Watt and the academic lead for this new global research institute in health and care technologies. This is a new pan-university institute bringing together social scientists, engineers, physicists to answer critical needs in areas like cancer, healthy aging, chronic disease, mental health and neurodegenerative disorders. Um, and this has just been started uh, over a year ago. Uh, it's very new for Heritwad. Heritwad is not necessarily known as the, um, the biomedical uh, university, but in fact, uh, in the last of 10 to 15 years, some of our physicists and engineers uh, have engaged deeply with um, medics and developed some really impactful projects, which are now in pilot clinical studies, in, in clinical trials, and in first in human studies. And so these new institutes come uh, really, you know, on, on the back of this uh, wonderful work. Um, and, and these uh, biomedical projects somewhat uh, align also to this vision of growing uh, biomedical technologies uh, at Heritwood. Um, so I came on board uh, this program on September 2023, and I thought Theo had done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, what an opportunity it is for students to have access to these real world projects and, and real world needs and, and work with uh, industrials uh, uh, or clinicians. Um, uh, I, I did identify a few challenges um, and some were that students are really unfamiliar with the healthcare sector and often the, the clients in, in these projects um, the clinicians don't have much time. They have an idea. They they want they don't want to do the work, but they are not necessarily um, easy to reach or have a lot of time to spend to the students. Um, and there's a, a lack of interaction, you know, with, with the healthcare sector and unlimited availability of NHS staffs. Um, however, just a few months after I um, started in this uh, program led by Theo. I met with a Professor Kahal Brin. He's a professor of nursing at uh, Edinburgh Napier. And Kahal invited me to visit the uh, Napier Simulation and Clinical Skills Centers. And together we conceived the idea of bringing nurses uh, into these uh, student projects and utilizing the center in a, in a completely new way. Um, so if you can move uh, to the next slide. Um, yeah. There's a, a photo of us here in, in one of the visits. Um, so Kahal Brin is on the left there. He might be uh, uh, joining um, uh, this call. Um, and there's a range of entering students and, and, and nursing students. And there's really multiple core benefits uh, to this new collaboration. So one is educating our engineering students about the hospital environment without relying on NHS resources. Um, by, by using the, the Napier uh, Simulation and Clinical Skills Centers. It ensures early and continuous feedback on projects throughout uh, the project, and it enables testing of prototype in real-like environments with professional feedback, and it also empowers student nurses to innovate. Um, so if you can move on to the next slide, uh, Theo, um, and, and to the next again, Yes, thank you. So here we have um, a couple of, of videos uh, that we have taken during these visits. Um, and um, uh, uh, it gives you an, an idea of uh, how we're running these. Um, there's, there's a few images of you know, some of the prototypes that the students are, are making. But you know, be, be before this, um, it was a little bit hard for the student to imagine. Well, they had to imagine the, the hospital environment very much. Uh, now they can be, you know, safely, you know, in a in a simulated environment. Um, and for the student nurses, it's it's great. We Hal and I are a strong believer that the nurses are innovators. They are 
uh, at the forefront of, of healthcare. They have daily engagement with the patients and the, the rest of the clinical team. And so they can really see the problems, but also have ideas of, of the solutions. And we want them to see themselves as agents of change, as you know, idea generators and future entrepreneurs as well. And so we hope that our project you know, has shown a little bit of this. So if you can move on to the next one, I think there's, um, yeah, so we see the student fitting one of their prototypes. I think it's running the same video again, if you can All move. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm really thankful for Fiona, uh, who has really supported this, uh, this new initiative. We think that the um, a teaching environment uh, has really improved. The students are so enthused uh, and, and really enjoyed uh, their visits. Um, and the clients are getting, you know, a, a lot more, you know, information uh, uh, through, you know, the, these interactions. Um, Fiona and, and her team, you know, have been able also to join us and add information. Uh, and that has been really a, a, an enjoyable experience. Um, so the timeline for project submissions, as uh, Theo mentioned at the beginning, so from now to last week of August, we're uh, expecting a project submission. Don't wait until the last week of August. Please do send us your draft proposals. And I'm sure Fiona will, will share our template for project submissions. We're very happy. Theo and I are very happy to discuss with you. Uh, if the projects are suitable, and indeed, if you go through Inoscot, uh, you know you you have Fiona, Fiona, and Fiona's team um, to to discuss with you, um, and we're happy to help you write the the portfolio, the brief, the project brief, um, and and do a round of of revision before end of August. Um, so on this, uh, I'll hand back uh, to Fiona uh, for sharing, and I'm very happy to answer questions later on. That's great. Thanks very much, uh, Theo Myron. Um, I'll move straight on to hand over to Lorraine. Um, and I'm conscious that the, some of you may be not healthcare professionals, but are actually from companies. Um, and I think in that's that in that sense, as much as you can speak to us or speak to Harriet or directly, I would highly recommend you speak to the in interface team if you're not if you haven't spoken to them or been in touch with them before, because they can very much actually. Um, help you um, in the, this and amongst other processes and hence that was the reason for for bringing them um, here so it fits very well with that finding the right match and um, linking on so I'll hand over to you Lorraine. Thanks Fiona and thanks for the invite to speak today um, as Fiona says uh, Lorraine Thompson's the name and I'm here to talk about interface and how we can help you with supporting healthcare innovations. So put very simply Interface is a hub and we're there to connect you to any of Scotland's universities, colleges and research institutes in actual fact for any subject, any discipline that would be taught in any of these universities. We've been around for almost as long as InnoScot, not quite as long, we're coming up to 20 years, but we're funded by the Scottish Funding Council who also fund these academic institutes to be able to provide our service free of charge. And we're here to connect you into student support, but also academic support. Now, Harriet Watt, Theo and Harriet Watt, is very much uh, one of the institutes that we work closely with. And uh, I can report back, Theo, certainly companies have really enjoyed doing projects uh, through your courses. That's been always good feedback. But what we provide is an open door to any of these institutes throughout Scotland. Um, they all have their own specialisms and they are geared up to wanting to work on industry projects. They want the challenge of working on real world ideas and real world challenges. Now we go about it in a really straightforward way. We will meet with you, chat to you, to try and define what it is that you want to do. You know, what is the problem that you want to, to get solved or what's the idea you want to develop? We help get that on paper because most of the time none of this is written down. It's in somebody's head or it's an idea they have or, or something that's that's getting to them, but it's just not been formulated in kind of project form before. So we can help get that put down on paper. 
And then the way we go about it is we actually circulate the project around every one of these institutes you've just seen that could potentially help. And we give a tight deadline on that. We just give a two or three week deadline to try and solicit expressions of interest to find out who out there might be keen to actually work on a project. We then put you in touch with the interested parties. Quite often there is more than one. Sometimes we get you know two or three, but get you in touch with who's come back, help you to sort of try and decide who the, the best solution might be for you, but then also stay on hand to assist with any necessary funding. Intellectual property was mentioned uh, briefly there too by Mywin, but certainly that can be a concern for anybody who has an idea that they want to develop and they want to take on commercially. So all these things, of course, have been considered um, in advance with these institutes. So there are NDA templates that can be signed for any collaboration before it starts. But in terms of intellectual property, the standard approach is that the foreground IP, which is the, the work that will be carried out as part of the research project, would be retained by the company. And the institute, the university, say, would have um, a license, an edge, a research license, to be able to talk about the work through their teaching, but also potentially produce it into some kind of a research paper. But the commercial side is is um, set aside there for the company bringing that idea to the institute. Now, a great long list not to be read by any means, but I just want to give a quick mention here to the wide range of specialist facilities that are in place throughout these different institutes. Whether it be for analysis, testing, creating something, then these can be made available for hire or for use within the institute with obviously the technical help. So it's worth remembering that facilities, equipment can be sourced as well. So funding, as I say, our service is free and we're here to help you find a willing partner within one of these institutes. Um, but also um, there could be, of course, costs involved. Now, student projects can be different. They are often the case that there isn't an immediate cost to the company. There may be some sort of travel subsistence costs, but other than that, that tends to not be something that's um, a cost factor. But for other projects where it's predominantly academic help, then there are grants available that can help to cover costs. So the key one that we tend to um, be involved in is the innovation voucher scheme. Now that comes about if there's going to be a new product process or service produced as a result of the project. If that's the case, then a voucher can be applied for with the institute taking the lead, with the client very much inputting as well. And that is valued up to seven and a half thousand pounds that would go to the institute to undertake the work without any cash match required from the company. So around about a third of the projects that we help to match make to broker do manage to take advantage of the standard innovation voucher. There's also a student placement voucher. Now, these are less common, but can be quite useful as an immediate follow up to the innovation voucher to have a student actually working with you in a business, in a company, to make sure that the findings of the innovation voucher work are actually embedded and um, happen. The advanced innovation voucher, this one does require a company contribution of two and a half thousand pounds, but that's immediately doubled, that's immediately matched by um, public funds as well. But the value of that voucher can go up to as high as 20,000. I'm just going to say um, our slides are going to be shared after the presentation and I'm conscious that mine are a bit wordy, so don't worry too much about what they're saying because the slides will be shared afterwards. So all the detail you'll get, you'll get beyond the presentation. In terms of funding, the final one I'll mention is the Inward Investment Catalyst Fund. Um, now, this is a slightly different fund and this is money we've received from the Scottish Government. And it's all about attracting companies not yet in Scotland to set up a base in the country. 
not to move completely, but to set up some kind of foothold in Scotland. But the funding is to undertake a project with an academic institute, and there's funding of up to £10,000 for that. So this is quite useful for people perhaps already interested in doing something with a Scottish university, but without the funding to do it, but um, keen, to, keen to get a move up to Scotland at some point. The deadline for that one, though, is end of July. But it's all about um, inward investment and creating jobs within the country. Now, I'm very conscious of time, so I'm just going to give you four very quick examples of healthcare type projects that have come um, our way and where we've been able to, to try and help. Um, the first one here is Phoenix Instinct, that's based through in Elgin. The, the owner of that company is a wheelchair user and he was very keen to set up a company that made bes bespoke wheelchairs because Everybody comes in different sizes and shapes, and it's very difficult to find a wheelchair that's actually going to be really suitable. So he wanted to create bespoke wheelchairs dependent on the size and shape of a person. Uh, we matched him up with the University of West of Scotland, and they put a bid in for a Toyota Mobility Challenge, which they, they won, they succeeded, and they drew down a million dollars to be able to get the company set up and get the work up and running. What happened? then is that uh, the company have set up uh, through University of West of Scotland two knowledge transfer partnerships and these are partnerships whereby you have a graduate working with the company in situ to be able to really develop the idea further but with ongoing academic supervision. The funding for that comes from, from any of it UK which is uh, the UK's innovation agency with government money. My second one is an idea um, that came our way is from three friends who uh, coincidentally all had uh, trouble with their gut health and decided to try and put their brains together and come up with some idea for something that might be helpful in that regard. They came to Interface and we supported them in a match with Glasgow Caledonian University and through a lot of processes and trials and this very much involved academics and students, they've now developed IO Fibre Water, which is the UK's first prebiotic fibre infused water. Um, the great thing about this is they've just launched an ASDA. They've been able to attract quite a lot of investment and they've been winning awards. We're very keen to do, do more projects with colleges. And this is a good example here of a college project. This is um, Betty Pod. And the client here worked with West College Scotland. And the entrepreneur wanted to develop the world's first menstrual cup washer and sanitizer for away from home environments. Now, for this idea, the college and the client brought in a, a medical device company, and the three of them worked together on this project. Now, the patent is due. Uh, to be in place by next year and they expect to bring the product to market next year. So again, this is a good example of a college medical device um, manufacturer and a client working nicely together. My final example is a lady who was very frustrated that the medical device her daughter had to use for her respiratory condition it wasn't something the daughter wanted to use. It wasn't very child friendly. And she had this idea that there must be something there that would make it easier for children to have to go through the, the, the daily process. There was simply no paediatric equipment available. So she came to Interface a few years ago now and over time has worked with three different institutes for very different parts of, of the business. So she tapped into biomedical engineering, lab testing and then finally branding and marketing for the product that's called Bubble Flow. So that's the result now and it will be coming out to market very, very soon. So uh, very heavily tested, seems to be very successful and the whole idea is to get not just her daughter but her future customers more motivated to actually be able to use this and ideally to save um, cost to the NHS for children not having to go back into the NHS for having to get respiratory um, treatment. So I know that was a very quick whistle stop tour through Interface. I do speak very fast, but I just wanted to cover what we what we did. 
uh, give you some healthcare examples. That's hopefully been helpful. And just let you know that we're here to help. Um, come to me initially, but we do have a team dotted throughout Scotland and I can obviously put you in place with the most appropriate person. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Lorraine. And now it's time to answer some more questions. Um, I'm going to maybe ha hand over to Francis, who's got a better handle on <laughs> on some of those. Although maybe I should I should kick up with um, asking each of you to kind of you've maybe given the example already whether you've got kind of a favourite project that you've seen that sort of started out as a student project um, and see um, what other questions come in. Don't know who wants to start. <laughs> start with I, would say, I would say mine is bubble flow just because it's the last one I gave you there so it's maybe fresh in the minds but I think that that's been a lovely idea for a very frustrated mother who just wanted to, an improvement, you know, to her, her child's treatment. So I think that was a, a really good one to see and to, to see its progress over two or three years. You? Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've got one, but probably not, not medical related. Uh, it's also dealing with wheelchair. And uh, it's a company that we've worked with for the last oh, four three years, three, four years, uh, GM4X. Uh, I think it was Interface that actually introduced uh, us to them as well. And uh, the company is now selling their off-road wheelchairs for uh, people who are par paralegic. Uh, and they have, they're also involved with, uh, you know, trying to look at the next um, Olympic style wheelchair, uh, but for downhill racing, surprisingly. Um, so we we were involved with that, and we actually got the second year students uh, to do um, a semester project on on that one. Um, the company has also hired a Harriet Watt graduate, um, um, how you say, um, hit hunted through the through the project itself, uh, it, it, in, in through the course itself, I should say. Yeah. Um, so so that that went really very well, um, and um, he's intending to come back for the next year as well. So um, I think that's probably the most outstanding one. Uh, we do have one kind of like um, the children one. It's a toy uh, as well. Uh, I, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's gone into production. Uh, and, and I know they're selling it. It's a little ball throwing toy. I haven't been involved in a program for um, long enough to have seen things co going into the market as Theo has. But um, we can help put uh, a project uh, to deliver a device that would help with um, ECG cables and the fact that they come really untangled, etc. And and we had a, a really really good uh, student project uh, group uh, looking into this um, to the point that we are now looking to put an uh, an NIHR I for I um, project um, to pursue um, this these projects. Um, so that's quite exciting. But um, yeah, um, watch this space. <laughs> I was just going to say, guys, it's really interesting to see how um, industry and um, the students can work together. And um, I was just wondering, um, you know, gaining feedback from the students and being able to talk to different multidisciplinary teams within the university is really important. So I'm just wondering about your experience with that and um, how much that's helped to kind of streamline the process. And how, how you kind of get them engaged as well is, is something that's coming up. Um. I can start by saying that um, so we advise the students and our role um, as an adv as an academic advisor is to point the students towards the right um, the right people. I sometimes put uh, the students in touch with other academics. So, for example, at Hertwood University, we have fantastic expertise in textile. So I've often pointed uh, students towards our textile experts. Um, sometimes point students towards, you know, in 
third party industrials who can who can help and that has been really really useful uh, in general what we see is that students get so much out of these interactions right i mean for them they've been in their little academic bubble and these projects are a safe place to get to understand how to communicate with professionals, you know, with, with industrials, et cetera. And, and they get so much. And one of the students this year was saying he sat for 20 minutes with these industrials and learned, you know, much more than hours on YouTube or, you know, I, I, I won't say hours on, on lecture theater, that would be bad, but, and it, you know, they learned so much from industrial interaction. Yeah, I, I think, you know, from, from the, from students' perspective, that that's kind of like a, a spectrum. Um, over the years, I've seen that there's students that are really want to just maintain in their bubble because they feel safe in there. And then right at the other extreme, there are students who finally get a chance to work on something real. And these are the ones that really excel very quickly. Um, and, you know, um, it's trying to to get the students to have this sense of, you know, you're in your final year, you got to start to decide where you want to go to after this. Um, and a, for those that are kind of like still being introvert in their sense here, uh, they find it tough throughout the whole course. Yeah, they, they find it really tough. And we can see that during presentations, they don't either say much or, you know, they're kind of like in their own zone, basically. But then the the rest of them. So, in in terms of of the kind of flavor um, that that we that we have across the years, um, we we have actually a very nice bell curve, which is unsurprising, I guess you could say. And a, we do find that some of the even the the introvert students. We had one, like I say, a, a way back when I first started, um, and this was with a company that was going into the John Logie Bear competition. Uh, this particular um, student, um, she was rather quiet, but actually she was the brains behind some of the, the big breakthroughs in, in terms of of the uh, 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 product innovation. Um, but you know she just couldn't get out of her head, and you know, and, and kind of like remain in that in that area. However, because of the competition, because she was involved in it, she had no choice but to gear herself up for that. And I think it was because of that that she finally broke that bubble. Um, so, it, I, it, you know, something's ha having this having these kinds of, of projects where where, you know, some clients in, do intend to take things into, you know, the, the next level really helps the, the students start to see the bigger picture of what they it would be like when they graduate. And I think this this is the, the real plus side of it. But I can't say it for every student. That's that's the that's the only problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's really interesting. I think as well to have the simulation lab and that kind of a uh, interaction um, with the patient and how their ideas would develop is really important. So how early do you think um, students should try to engage and bring their innovations and their ideas to kind of fruition? And um, is it good that they have prototypes and something to touch and actually show their work? Yeah, I, I would say so. So normally the way that we run our, our course is that we expect students by the end of the first semester to have a fair idea of the kind of design that they want to work on, or at least the proposed design that they want to work on. And that must have, have received some agreement from the client. Uh, in terms of prototypes, uh, you know, some of them are kind of, I don't know, maybe not so hands on. And they rather do, you know, uh, drawing on a computer, you know, on, on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's kind of like, I don't mind that, but I always say to students, right, don't jump into the engineering graphics because at this point in time, you're still conceptualizing. It's better with pen and paper or you just doodle electronically, you know, but, you know, don't don't have, you know, those fancy, you know, well-engineered drawing because that's really for the final stage once you've actually finalized your, your, your design. Uh, but it's quite difficult for some students to break out of that that thinking, um, and a you know we 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 tend to be as abstract as possible in the first semester. This the the, the reason why we we do that is we want to encourage creativity. Uh, you can be a very good engineer, but if you're not creative, you'll not make good products anyway. So so we try to encourage that that, that creativity by you know having them explore the solution space. And and we, we we get them to do exercises like you know go look for patents go look for 
academic papers, go look for blogs, go look for, you know, whatever information that you can get, consolidate that and come back uh, and speak to your client and speak to us, you know, academics you know, as advisors and find out, you know, whether they're going in the right direction or not. So just kind of guidance we we, we hope to encourage them to, to take on. Um, but, you know, getting back to, to whether this will result in a prototype, oftentimes it might be just a paper prototype. Uh, the physical prototype really depends on whether students want to get their hands dirty. I've had students in the group before say, you know what, I don't like the workshop. Um, I've thrown away my overalls and I'm, I'm not going to do any, you know, um, hand, hand work. Well, that's fine. You come up and figure out how you want to present your things then. That's what we would say to them. Yeah. I, I so, think, yeah. Theo, uh, over the years, we've seen the use of, of 3D printing helping a lot in, in that respect, where students don't have to go in a mechanical workshop necessarily. Um, they can make a model on their computer and, and print it. And it's definitely useful for the student to bring that to the client or in now in, in this case with the um, collaboration with a Napier University to the nursing students and, and nursing staff there. Um, because, I mean, having something in your hand, you know, does help. It doesn't have to be all singing and dancing. Sometimes even a cardboard um, a prototype, you know, can, can help understand better how it would work, how it would interact with the end users, etc., and what you're missing in terms of safety or user interactions, etc. Yeah, I, I think, you know, certainly 3D printing, is, it really helps a lot now because, you know, it's uh, all, all the students here have free access and, and so would your, so would the clients. Uh, if they wanted 3D printed stuff, they would have access here as well. Um, over the years, I've seen, you know, uh, quite creative students. Um, I remember one group coming up with a pure origami mock-up of a one-to-one -one scale product, which I thought was fantastic. Um, I had other students that came with Lego and uh, they actually made something and brought it along for, for the show and tell, uh, which is really, really good as well. You know, other others, you know, kind of like went went out into the, uh, there's a kind of a little bit scrapyard area just behind our workshops and, and they... They went to bodge up something, which I thought was really, really good as well. So yeah, I mean, we, we get a we get a whole range. Yeah, we get a whole range. Thanks very much for that. I'm looking at conscious, very conscious of time, and I wanted to maybe round up with um, a couple, um, a couple of kind of final final slides. Um, thanks very much for everybody's um, input and. Well, good feedback. Um, I think we've got some of the questions were less questions, but more things for us to follow up with and how we can, you know, continue the following up and encouraging people to get more to engage with, um, you know, clinical staff and, and also with students as well. So we'll certainly follow up on those things. Um, this is the last webinar before our summer break and um, very conscious we needed to get you thinking about that because bearing in mind um, academic before the, we know it the summer will be passed and the students will be back um, our next uh, webinar is going to be the 28th of August um, building a brand identity and in the meantime you can watch um, this will be on demand available for you to share on demand anywhere with any colleagues or anybody you think might be interested want to know a little bit more um, and um, probably the easiest way to find out when that goes live is is to sign up to our newsletter um you can scan that or we'll we can send a link um afterwards um if you think you've got a good idea and you'd like to just submit it to us and then we can take it forward whether it's relevant for this for student projects or the others we've got you know give as much information as you have or not and even if it's, you think it's more of a problem area rather than an idea um feel free to 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 submit that as i said also you know you can go, obviously go directly but we can help facilitate that link and in a way in an interface is very much that helps you you know come up with the the brief and, and can work together to make sure that we've you know, help you take that forward. Um, and um, I guess it's now a point to thanks absolutely for great speakers um, today and for the discussion. That's been really good, um, really helpful. And I'm, as a, as a former <laughs> employee, uh, yeah, worked for Interface for a number of years. Um, so um, it's, it's been really good to see, to be involved in projects where we're actually working directly rather than just facilitating those links. It's been really, it's really been really good over the last couple of years to see, to see the benefits that the students have got as well. So um, keen to see how we can 
to you know it's it it helps us as an organization to bring ideas forward which from those early ideas because that's you know that can be a pretty tricky time but it's been really um we certainly benefited a lot from from our interactions and look forward to developing those further and look forward to hearing ideas that those of you join today or friends who couldn't join or, or colleagues that um then you can pass on the details afterwards thanks very much have you hope you have a nice afternoon and i'll close off now